Hello everyone, this is a re-recording of a webinar originally presented in January 2015. Today I'm going to talk about some of the new lithology modeling tools in Rockworks 16. Here are the topics we'll cover today. First I'll discuss lithology versus stratigraphy and what's unique about lithology modeling. I'll talk about the lithology modeling algorithms, their strengths and differences and I'll discuss some of the additional modeling options which can modify modeling behavior and output. I should note that discussing all of the possible combinations of algorithms and settings would require that we be here all day. What I will do is walk through a very simple lithologic example showing some of their effects. I'll be illustrating examples using cross-sections created previously to save time. Rockware introduced the concept of lithology modeling in Rockworks many years ago, and to my knowledge we were the first to do this. We did so because stratigraphic modeling is surface-based and thus limited to organized, non-repeating rock and soil material. And many of our users work in smaller scale than regional formations and or in areas where materials are not presented in organized, nameable layers. So while stratigraphy models are made of stacked grid surfaces, lithology models are interpolated as a block or solid model with a regularly spaced grid of XYZ points. The modeling methods read lithologic intervals from the borehole database and interpolate the material type present in each node. The main concept of lithology modeling is that Rockworks bleeds the material types outward from the holes horizontally, layer by layer, until it bumps into a node that has already been interpolated. In doing so, Rockworks samples the data downhole at the resolution of your model, say every meter, so that regularly spaced points are sent to the modeling routine. The numeric value assigned to the nodes is based on the values defined in the lithology types table. The colors used to represent the materials are the background colors defined for the patterns in that table. Note that the output is not a gradational model of these G values, like a geochemistry model would be. Instead, the lithology modeling routines maintain the G values, one for soil, two for sand, etc. Historically, Rockworks offered one lithoblending algorithm with two flavors, one in which the materials bleed to the center point between each hole and its neighbors, and one in which the bleed is about a third of the way between neighbors, and a randomization method softens the transition area. The appearance of the feathering will depend on the resolution of the model. The finer the model, the more nodes in other words, the more randomized bands. The lithoblending algorithm has been split out into more distinct menu items, and we have added new methods. The algorithms are defined on the left side of the Solid Modeling Options window. Let's take a look. What we now call lateral extrusion is the method which extrudes to the midpoint between laterally adjacent holes. This is the non-randomized version. The benefit is that there is no randomization in, in transition regions. The disadvantage is the blocky appearance. Lateral blending is the method which extrudes one-third of the way between laterally adjacent holes, then randomizes correlations within the mid-zone. Lateral blending also offers the option to interpolate outliers, this will fill in any extrusion gaps in the mid-zones and in the outside areas of the model. It uses a nearest neighbor method. The benefit here is the randomization. It produces zigzag correlations that are similar to what a geologist might hand draw. The disadvantages of the randomization is that slightly different models can be produced each time a model is generated from the same data. So those are the renamed versions of the original lithology modeling methods. Let's continue. 
The closest point method was added in Rockworks 15, and it assigns voxel nodes using the closest point in any direction. This is different from the above methods, which extrude the lithotypes laterally. Here's an example. This may look much like the lateral extrusion method, but where you will see difference is at the bottom of the model or where there are data gaps. In this example, I've added this green material at the base of these holes. Closest point will limit the influence of these materials to the nodes closest to the logs. By contrast, lateral extrusion will extrude the green material laterally. The highest probability mo method was just added to Rockworks 16. This method starts by building a table of all unique G values in the control points. For each of these G values, or lithotypes, a probability model is generated based on the inverse square law, in which probability is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. The program then assigns the final node values based on the G value with the highest probability. In this specific example, the interpolation looks almost identical to the lateral extrusion method. There are distance filters offered which can make the probability model look slightly different. These examples have illustrated the four modeling algorithms with no other bells and whistles. And in this project, which dips from west to east, the intervals are broken and not very smooth. So now let's look at the additional options you can apply. These are available on the right side of the Solid Modeling Options window. The first option I'm going to talk about is warping. This is a process whereby instead of being completely horizontally biased, the lithologic extrusion will follow the contours of a warping grid. The name of the grid is defined here. So in this example, these disconnected and horizontally oriented blocks might look more connected. Note that the warping grid is shown in profile here. Let's take a look. I did a separate webinar a few months ago which discussed using some of the post-modeling manipulation tools to merge warped zones with not warped zones so that you could, for example, warp this middle section and leave the upper soil alone. I won't go into that in this session, but suffice it to say that this is definitely possible to avoid these warping effects at the top. Let's now look at the next option which might help us with this model, smoothing. We've completely rewritten the smoothing procedure. Previously, Rockworks would use a box type of filter to smooth the node values. For the node being smoothed, it would look at the values in the nine nodes surrounding it the 3 by 3 by 3 box surrounding the node. Rockworks now uses a cylinder which will give it less boxy effects. You can use the automatic setting which will set the smoothing cylinder's radius to 1.5 times the XY spacing of the model and the cylinder height to 1.5 times the Z spacing of the model. Actually, since the Z spacing is typically, typically smaller than the XY spacing, I usually conceptualize this as a smoothing disk rather than a cylinder. I should also note that unlike gradational I data and P data smoothing, the lithology smoothing is done as a classification smoothing method so that the material G values are retained. Here's an example of the warped lateral extrusion model run with the automatic smoothing filter. The edges are le less abrupt and the small lenses are removed. This can be handy if you are looking for more major structures. The effect of this will be more noticeable and it will be more helpful in a project with noisier data with more interspersed intervals. In your own work, if you need a larger smoothing filter, you can choose manual where you define the actual map radius and elevation height of the smoothing cylinder or disk. The next new addition to the smoothing filter is warp smoothing. <clears throat> if you are warping your model, you can also request that the smoothing disk follow these same warp contours. 
you define two RW grid models here, one for typically the ground surface and one for the warping surface. The basic idea is that the orientation of the smoothing disk will vary based on the warping grid. Here's the automatic smoothed model at the top and the warp smoothed model at the bottom. The changes are fairly minor in this example, but in your own work you'll find more benefit if you need to apply smoothing to a model which you've warped with a very contoured grid. The smoothing options can be applied after you've created your lithology model, if you want to experiment with the effects of different settings on an existing model that you like. Just go to the Utilities tab, click the Solid Filters Smoothing Filter option. Since this is a generic solid modeling filter for any type of model, you need to be sure to choose Classification Smoothing here so that it does not create gradational lithology types. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next webinar. They're always posted on our website, rockware.com.